It's Thursday, March 1st, 2007. At 1.08 p.m., a weak tornado touches down in southeastern Alabama, close to Enterprise. Tornado warnings go off for the 25,000 residents, many of whom are at work or school. In only four minutes, the twister strengthens rapidly to EF4 strength and plows through the heart of Enterprise. In the tornado's extremely short 10-minute life, hundreds of homes and businesses are damaged. Most tragically, eight high school students at Enterprise High School are killed. In this video, we look at the tornado's meteorological history, its devastation through Enterprise, and its legacy on the high school and the community. On the morning of February 28, 2007, a cold trough swung into the Four Corners region. A strong surface low seemed formed with a cold front draped to itself. This cold front, combined with a 150 knot jet stream and dew points in the 60s, spawned a line of thunderstorms in the late afternoon. Ten tornadoes touched down in Missouri and Kansas that evening, one of which reached EF4 strength. Thankfully, nobody was killed and damages were minimal. On March 1st, the Storm Prediction Center released a high risk of severe thunderstorms across the Deep South, its first high risk in 11 months. Enterprise was smack dab in the middle of the hatched 30% tornado risk. The cold front would move eastward into Mississippi by early afternoon, where dew points skyrocketed to the upper 60s. CAPE, a measure of atmospheric fuel for thunderstorms, reached values of 1,500 joules per kilogram. This is anomalously high for early March, along with a strong low-level and mid-level jet stream that generated strong wind shear. This wind shear would cause many thunderstorms to start rotating and turn tornadic. With all the ingredients in place, the SPC denoted the potential for long-tracking, violent tornadoes. A PDS tornado watch was issued by 7.30 a.m. It didn't take long for thunderstorms to fire. At 10.41 a.m., the National Weather Service issued the first of four tornado warnings for Coffey County. Fortunately, this tornado never materialized. An hour and a half later, at 12.10 p.m., NWS Tallahassee prompted a new tornado warning for Coffey County. This one included the city of Enterprise, but once again, the tornado never touched down. At 12.47 p.m., a radar-indicated tornado warning was issued for Coffey County, the third of the day. This warning included Enterprise. Damage surveys indicated that the tornado actually did touch down near Enterprise Municipal Airport shortly after at around 1.05 p.m. Damage here was light where four chicken houses were destroyed. Subsequently, the twister briefly lifted. In seconds, however, the tornado touched down again, this time strengthening quickly. Radar indicated a growing vortex on its northeast approach to the town. By 1.10 p.m., the storm moved through Ball Weevil Circle on a beeline towards Enterprise High School, where it gained its maximum EF4 strength. Enterprise High School consists of four primary hallways, numbered 1 through 4. When the original tornado warnings at 10.41 a.m. were initiated, staff and students took shelter by sitting on the sides of each hallway. According to students, they weren't worried, as the numerous tornado warnings didn't cause any actual tornadoes. The school principal, Rick Rainier, communicated with NWS Tallahassee to determine whether school instruction should continue. The greatest risk would onset around 3 p.m., according to the weather service, so Rainier planned for school buses to line up for dismissal at 1 p.m. Unfortunately, they weren't fast enough. When the tornado warning was issued at 1247, dismissal was delayed until the tornado's passing. The tornado packed winds up to 170 miles an hour as it first slammed into the third and fourth hallways around 1.10 p.m. The third hallway completely collapsed when the walls imploded on itself. Many students hunkered down in the hall, and all eight student fatalities occurred here. A science wing adjacent to the four main hallways was also blasted by the tornado. The whole wing was destroyed. Fortunately, no deaths occurred in this part of the school. On the other side of the building, the gym was recently renovated, 
the tornado caved in parts of that gym ceiling and exterior walls, completely destroying them. Outside, the parking lot designated blue was struck heavily by the tornado. Cars were mangled, metal frames were twisted. Many students who'd worked hard to deserve their own cars had their possessions, if not their lives, destroyed. Unfortunately, the tornado decimated other parts of Enterprise, too. A quarter mile wide swath of Dixie Drive was devastated, with incredible damage reported to many houses and businesses. Some structures were completely flattened. National Weather Service personnel initially rated the storm as EF3, but the flattened homes in this area gave evidence of EF4 rating. This would mark the first EF4 in history, less than only a month after the Enhanced Fujita Scale was created. Several other schools in the local YMCA were among the damaged buildings. As the tornado exited the town, it quickly weakened, dissipating just outside Northeastern Enterprise. Overall, its track only spanned 10 miles. According to the Red Cross, 239 homes were completely destroyed and another 374 sustained major damage. Among the tragic tales were heroic stories. A student told of how she was rescued by someone who held a pillar above her as a shield against the falling ceiling. Students rushed injured classmates to ambulances away from the rubble. Emergency personnel established makeshift shelters at nearby Hillcrest Baptist Church for Enterprise High and nearby Hillcrest Elementary School students. One of Enterprise's students, Stuart Halcombe, turned to music. He wrote a song one day after the tornado titled Held in His Love to honor the fallen eight. Television cook Rachel Ray paid for the school's prom catering, which took place in late April despite the tornado's impact and the school kept moving forward. After relocating to Enterprise State Community College for three years, a new high school building was happily constructed by August 2010. More than $45 million in disaster relief funding from FEMA and state-approved grants were poured into the construction. The new Enterprise High houses 2,100 students and stands at 525,000 square feet, one of the largest high schools in the Southeast. Saying that Enterprise Alabama was an unlucky town on March 1, 2007, would be a massive understatement. Not only did an EF4 tornado reach peak intensity right in its downtown, but the tornado's peak was so short too. If only the tornado had formed 5 miles further south, nothing but open fields would have been destroyed. If only the tornado had formed 15 minutes later, buses would have taken students home. Would dismissing students earlier have saved lives? Was there anything the school could have done to prevent the eight deaths? In a 33-page service assessment, the National Weather Service analyzed the tornado outbreak and provided guidance on safety. According to the report, it was found that the school actually did follow proper protocol in terms of maximizing student safety. Principal Rick Rainier rightfully communicated with the NWS on acceptable early dismissal times. School staff rightfully concentrated students in the hallways instead of in classrooms during each tornado warning. But eight tragic student deaths showed that current safety procedures aren't perfect. After the tornado's passing, questions sprung up from the residents of Enterprise. How can we minimize student deaths from tornadoes in schools? Is it feasible to install storm shelters or designated sheltering rooms? Please let me know what you think in the comments. I wanted to bring this sad but important tornado into the meteorological spotlight and the eight students that tragically lost their lives on that horrible Alabama afternoon will always be remembered.